Hey everybody, it's JD for Mad Bros Media, and today, next to me, I have Bill Mosley. What? You, sir, are terrifying. Thank you. How, where, where do you, where do you come up with, with such just intense, scary, I mean, you, you're, you're kind of a twisted guy on film. You know, I, don't, I, I frankly don't know. I go into a trance, um, I, it's called acting, and uh, what I do is I just uh, read the story, follow the storyline, uh, say what I'm supposed to say, and uh, try to make it real. You look like you have a lot of fun doing it, too. I'm always happy in my work. <laughs> That's the scary part. I tell you what, uh, Devil's Rejects, watch that again. I got excited. I had to get a little fanboy. got excited to come because I knew I was going to meet you guys. And... Uh, yeah, every time I watch it, there's just something, just another little subtle nuance of what you're bringing to the character and the role that just it, it cracks me up. It seems like, it seems like it's it's a, a sick, twisted, but fun, loving. It just is. Is it any of you that you're bringing into this? Uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot. Uh, you know, I've always wanted to be like Otis, but, um, uh, you know, mercifully I'm not. I have children, so I think that would be uh, two girls, in fact, so I think that would be a whole different uh, uh, take on upbringing, would be as if uh, their dad was Otis and not just good old Bill. Um, but, uh, you know, I've always loved horror movies, um, and uh, so... When I get a chance to do a horror movie or a scary movie, really any any acting role, I just try to make it real, have fun with it, and uh, just remember that, uh, especially if I'm playing psychos or crazies, that uh, I'm the only sane one in the room. That's my only. That's my mantra. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So and, I don't, and I don't judge them. Well, you can't. <laughs> if you're an actor and you're judging the character you're playing, you're screw I would imagine you'd have to um, you'd have to find something of a sympathetic heart for for what they you know what they're going through yeah because you're you know you're selling you know you're selling reality you know actors are salespeople and if you aren't uh, you know selling if you aren't buying you're not selling I'll tell you what you're a hell of a salesman because you sell scary every time I watch that Thank movie you very much well it's these crazy blue eyes <laughs> And it's funny because neither of my parents has blue eyes. So I don't know really where they came from, but you know, I got them. It's a, it's it's fun watching you watching you work. You talking about your your kids? Uh, are are they are they of age to watch and enjoy? Uh, my older daughter is 28, okay. and uh, she has seen my movies and she she likes them. Yeah. Uh, my younger daughter is 16. She hasn't really seen a lot of Daddy's movies, but. Um, uh, last, uh, about a week ago, I was invited to the world premiere of Human Centipede 3 oh God. in Los Angeles. <laughs> and I knew my older daughter would like it, so I invited her and her boyfriend and a friend of hers. And I was about to go out to the theater and meet them. And my younger daughter said, wait a minute, Dad, are you going to Human Centipede 3? And I said, yeah. And she goes, I'm going. And I said, okay. So uh, she came along, you know, however inappropriate it might have been, and it was, um, and uh, she really enjoyed herself. She enjoyed herself because she was part of the group, and uh, I actually enjoyed it. My favorite part was before they showed the movie was uh, they had a red carpet, mm -hmm. and I was able to walk down the red carpet with my two daughters. That's cool. That's and cool. it was very cool, and it was a wonderful father-daughter moment, but of course it was the Human Centipede 3, so... It was wildly inappropriate as well as being cool. So, when you're when you're going through uh, scripts and roles and whatnot, is it, is it a pretty easy decision for you? Or there's are there some some roles you actually kind of have to mull over and really kind of you know decide if this is what you want to do? You mean in terms of uh, like a, a morally repugnant? Sure. <laughs> no. No. In fact, uh, the ruder the better. I I did I was uh, I did a movie called Repo: The Genetic Opera. Loved you in that, by the way. Thank you very much. And I did that up in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, Toronto. And I remember on the set one day, one of the producers, Carl Mazacone, came up to me and said, you know, I have this script that I'd love to have you in, in the movie. And I said, well, what, what, um, what kind of script is it? He said, it's called The Tortured. And you would play, I said, well, great, what would I play? And he said, well, you would play 
a guy who kidnaps children and then, you know, sexually abuses them and then kills them and buries them in his front yard, backyard, excuse me. And um, I said, what? He said, yeah, you'd be a child molester killer. And I said, oh my God, man, I, you know, I, I have daughters, I have children. I don't want to play that character. And then, uh, and then he told me how much he was going to pay me and I went, show me the boy. So <laughs> that's an old joke of mine, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's movies. Uh, you know, it's not actually, uh, you know, it's not like you're dancing with the devil or making some kind of moral compact with uh, something evil. Um, you know, and a lot of times, I remember doing a White Fang, a Walt Disney movie. And I remember uh, talking to uh, an actor named James Remar, who was also on that movie. And he said that he plays, he likes to play bad guys, or when he does play bad guys, you know, what makes him feel, I guess, good about it, or what's redeeming about it, is he's kind of putting out there, you know, what not to be, which is almost as important as what to be, you know, when you're in a movie or some kind of a context like that. So, you know, I don't really sweat it. Um, I did I did actually go ahead and shoot the tortured. <laughs> tortured was funny because there was a scene where I have a captive boy and uh, and I'm supposed to come in and uh, you know s you know s be scary. I mean he's supposed to look up and be frightened of me. And um, it was very funny because he was a you know 10 year old kid, his mom was there and uh, I guess you know he knew that I wasn't really a scary guy. And so, uh, you know, I, I walk in and the camera's over my shoulder and it's supposed to show him like, you know, no. And instead he's kind of like, you know, no. He was kind of like, hi, Bill. <laughs> and uh, the director was unhappy with that. And so the director went to uh, the kid's mom and said, look, you know, we're having trouble. He's not scared, <laughs> should be scared, he's not. Uh, what can we do? And, and she said, uh, well, I shouldn't tell you this, but uh, you know my son is is frightened of Chucky from Child's Play, and, and the director went, ah, Chucky, eh? So the director went to the uh, to the art department, and in their truck full of props and different things, they happen to have like a big cardboard face of Chucky. So uh, in order to get the result they needed for the torture for that scene, what they did was they had me. Um, they pinned this big face of Chucky to my chest. And the camera is, again, is over my shoulder, so you can't really see that I've got Chucky. And uh, they go action, and I, I open the door, and I walk in, and the, this time the kid looks up and goes, you know, and he's frightened. <laughs> Genuine <laughs> Not because of me, but because I got Chucky on my chest that no one can see. So that's, awesome. that's you know, when you, that's the kind of thing so it's not really a moral issue so much as it is like, you know, just another, you know, funny, weird, frightening job. It sounds like a thanks mom moment too. <laughs> right. I'm sure he'll grow up and, you know, if he ever finds that out, he'll be pissed. You've been in some pretty unique roles, real unique movies. Which one stands out the most for you as far as just the experience and what are you most proud of? Um, you know, it always goes back to Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I love Chop Top. Hey, here's, here's Chop Top right here. Hey, lick my plate, you dog dick. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what's great about Chop Top is that uh, Chop Top really is the father of my career. Uh, all things come from Chop Top from that, from that part back in 1986. Um, Rob Zombie was a big Chop Top fan, and, and because of that, hired me to play Otis Driftwood in House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects. Um, you know, Chop Top also got me uh, the part of Johnny in Night of the Living Dead because the, the special effects makeup artist on Chainsaw that, that devised the Chop Top makeup and the new Leatherface look was Tom Savini. And Tom Savini ended up uh, directing uh, the, uh, the remake of Night of the Living Dead and hired me because we were pals um, on the set of Chainsaw 2. So, so much has come from Chop Top. It was really the first time I ever realized you could make a living at this, which was pretty remarkable. Were you pretty stoked when you found that out? I, I was. <laughs> you mean I could get paid for this? I can get paid for this and paid pretty well. Uh, you know, there's a union of actors, so you get like medical benefits and 
I can retire someday and get like benefits and whatever that is, pension. <laughs> so all of that was just uh, startling, and I, that really all came from Chainsaw 2. That's excellent. That's and it was really maybe the most fun I've ever had actually on camera, you know, being on, you know, being in a movie. Was it because it was just so like so fresh and so new an experience for you? Fresh and new, and it was such an amazing character. Kit Carson wrote the script, and you know, he and Toby Hooper, and such an amazing character, amazing lines, uh, just amazing, just the, the business of the coat hanger and the, the lighter and the scratching the plate and everything about that was just so much fun. You know, and working with Caroline Williams, Bill Johnson, Dennis Hopper, Jim Sedow, I mean, it was pretty, really an amazing experience that, you know, has really kind of, you know, if that's your that's your first love, you know. You know, you're guaranteed to have a happy time of it for the rest of your life, pretty much. So, well, Miss Mosley, I appreciate your time, sir. Terrifying man. What's more terrifying? Uh, what do you think is more terrifying? The devil's rejects or uh, being a being a dad? Oh, being a dad, absolutely. Yeah. There's nothing scarier than being yeah, a parent. Exactly. <laughs> and it continues. Yeah, but I, I love being a parent, and I love being an actor. I love the horror genre. I love the family. Uh, it's an extended uh, family, right? Yeah. And, you know, that's why I try to do a good job is because as a horror fan, I've seen too many times when people, like, phone it in because it's the horror genre. I don't phone it in. I like to, you know, I like to kick some horror butt whenever I get the chance. And so, uh, you know, and that's why I think I, I keep working. I tell you what, you definitely hit the ball out of yeah. the park every time I've ever seen you work. I, I, I try to do a good job and I try not to be a dick, if you can say that in this broadcast here, because, Why not? you know, this is such a great opportunity. We're very lucky. And uh, and if you're staying in your trailer because your Perrier is too warm, you know. Have, have you ever had, all right, one last question. Yeah. Have you ever had a moment through your career where you just completely geeked the hell out and you're just like, oh my God, I can't believe I just met. Yes, and that was when I met uh, Jim Sedow on the set of Texas Chainsaw 2. Nice. Because I was feeling very overwhelmed. I got this job because I had sent Toby Hooper like a little film I'd made called the Texas Chainsaw Manicure. <laughs> I was there. I wasn't really an actor, and uh, I was in Austin, Texas, spring of 1986, overwhelmed. Now, I'm, you know, they shaved my head for Chop Top, and now I'm going to be in this movie. I, I really had no clue. And uh, I was overwhelmed, and I remember this car pulls up into uh, the parking lot of uh, the Brook Hollow Motor Inn in Austin, Texas, and out of the car gets Jim Sedow, the cook from the original Texas Chainsaw. And I just saw him, and I went, it's the cook! <laughs> and he went, hey, how you doing? You know, and it was such a magic moment, and I realized, oh my God, this is going to be fun. That's cool. Yeah. Anyway, Bill, thank you, you for much. your time. Uh, Appreciate it.